welcome back to the Rev and Evan channel. We're out here at the NMRA NMCA race in Martin, Michigan. And I've been chasing this car a long time trying to do a video on my man Alan Hurley. 67 Fairlane, which you guys know I love. 66, 67 Fairlanes. Got the stacked headlights, but this one's packing a serious punch. Alan's running True Street this weekend, and we're going to give you the insight. Alan, welcome to the channel. Hey, thanks, Evan, man. We appreciate it. So, What's the big deal about this car? It runs sevens. It's got a twin turbo Coyote. Let's get into it. Alan, tell me about your car. Listen, this car started off supposed to have a 700 inch big block in it. We had it sitting to the side in the shop. Right. The guys kept giving me a hard time. Let's put a Coyote in it. My friend Jackie, my crew chief Dale, let's put a Coyote in this. Put a Coyote in it. <laughs> Said we got our old buddy John Uris. Let's call John up and right. see what he's got. So we did. We put a Coyote in it. We're running John's uh, new, what we call voodoo turbos. They're brand new. John engineered them. And man, this thing is stinking flying now. Man, well, I watched it run yesterday, and it's just a rocket ship. It's nice and smooth going down the track. We're going to bring you inside the car like we always do. We're going to show you under the hood. So let's get to it. Oh, Alan, look at that beautiful villain piece. Twin turbos, all that custom fabrication, got the Joker valve covers, and it fits under that stock looking hood with the uh, the 67 front mount Ram Air scoop. Yeah, I gotta tell you, Evan, we've been working on this a long time, couple different configurations as we go. Sorry. We're, We're running a TKM Coyote. This thing's got a billet crank in it, billet rods, got some voodoo they do to the heads. It's got some big cams in it. Man, this thing will literally just pound the ground and it loves to eat, man. I tell you, it makes power so much on the top. It's unbelievable, Evan. What's the displacement on this engine? It's only about 305 inches is all it is. And I tell you, we've just a uh, custom sheet metal intake that we put on it. Lots of uh, custom things here with the uh, uh, the coil packs, if you notice back here, they're all protected up. Well, we drive this thing on the street, Evan. We'll take it out, drive it to car shows. We drive it around. We do True Street. But uh, um, John Homeyer did the wiring on the car. He made a lot of special little things for it just to kind of keep the weather off of uh, those coil packs. And we've just tweaked little things as we went, and this is what we've ended up with. Alan, tell us a little bit about the history of the car. How long have you owned it? What condition was it in when you got it? So I owned it about seven years ago. It was kind of a pro touring car. Kind of had a whole different setup. So we got into it in the shop. We were actually going to a, uh NMRA race in Atlanta years ago. And we were trying to get this thing finished. I had about 15 guys over at the shop. We worked about 27 hours straight. Got this car done, loaded it up in a trailer, went to Atlanta to go run, end up getting some good test passes in, which is what we're shooting for, which was kind of a crazy deal. 27 hours in the trailer, straight drive over, unloaded it, went to making passes. Man, that is incredible. What motor did it have when you got it? Well, it had a, a 428 in it when we got the car. We took it out, had a 700 inch big block. This was going to be an easy call. We were kind of coming back into drag racing. We did a lot of stuff uh, 10, 12 years ago, won a lot, and my son was like, Hey, Dad, let's get back into drag race. We thought we'd do a couple 10-second cars. That didn't work out too good. 700-inch big block was going to be real easy and simple. A little nitrous on it. That didn't work out too good. All my pals were like, we've got to put a Coyote in it. Next thing you know, here we go. we got a Coyote. Been through a couple revisions, and the TKM revision we got has been, been the hot rod. So what, what horsepower level and what's the best DT? I saw you running the 7s here. Yeah, we've run a, a 750 with it. Uh, last year at uh, Mod Nationals, and uh, this year we've upgraded the turbos. Uh, these turbos we've got on here are John Uris, so the Hellion turbos that he's just kind of come out with. The first pass off the trailer, this thing made five pounds more boost in the first second, and we had that sucker strapped down trying to not make any more power, made five more pounds in the first second. And out the back, it just keeps making power. It just keeps making power. So speaking of power, how much is it making? We, we think... We patted on the dyno at TKM, uh, just trying to get a little base deal on it. 
We only run up to about 5,200 RPMs, made 1,700 at 5,200 RPMs. We run about 8,800 or so. So we, we figure based on the ETs we're running, probably 25 to 2,700 pretty easy to the tire. Horsepower. Horsepower. Holy crap. 2,700? About 2,700, just based on the ET and the weight. Uh, I mean, this whole girl's heavy. I mean, we call her the Joker, but uh, it's 3,800 pounds with me in it. I mean, it's a legit street car. How many miles a year do you put on it? I don't know, probably 1,000, 1,500, maybe 2,000. I mean, we drive it to car shows around town, just take it out to ride for fun around town, and uh, uh, we love it. We can drive what we want. We get, it gets about 16 miles to a gallon. We tested it. That's wild. So talk to me about this induction system because that is so rad looking and obviously it's designed to fit in the confines of the Fairlane engine bag. Yeah, it was really tough to get everything to fit in here. You know, you think that that uh, little 305 inch motor just dropped right in a old big old 67 Fairlane, but it's not that easy. So everything in it's custom fabbed. We custom, uh, custom made the headers over at uh, McCarty Performance, done all that, all this right here. Uh, every single piece in the car has been custom fab. Dale from Fat Boy Fabrication has done a lot of this. His guys, um, all the turbo mounts, exhaust, all that stuff has been custom done over at uh, Fat Boy. So we put a lot of, a lot of work in to try to squeeze uh, this motor with these great big old heads into this car. Man, that is wild. So the next question is, being that it's a street car, because you know, not that it's easy to build a seven second car in the first place, right. but to build a 750 capable car that you drive 1500 miles a year out on the roads and the 30 mile cruise here when you run True Street later today, what are some of the challenges maybe with the cooling system or drive line that you face to have the durability to go sevens and drive on the street? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, cooling system is a big deal. We've been doing this for about 20 years with True Street cars, and uh, we've got a special little formula kind of based on the size of uh, radiator we need, the type of cooling, the size of the lines, etc. that we've been working on for a long time, so it works pretty good for us. Our cars usually don't run over 185 to 90 even on the third pass, and if we're just driving around the street, they never get over 170. Uh, it takes a lot to keep a car to, to keep a car doing that, and so uh, we just kind of big old fuel cell in it. Um, we do drink a little gas when we make a pass, but uh, it gets good gas mileage driving down the road. What fuel are you running? We run Q16 in it. Uh, a lot of people ask us, why don't you run uh, E85 in it? Well, we drive it on the street a lot. You know, it takes a lot more E85 to make a pass, and so the Q16 does a good job for us. We've been running it for 15 years, and we just like it. So thermostat or no thermostat? It does have a thermostat. That's always a big question as far as like uh, keeping it cool. Do you want one in there or not? Yeah. We didn't. Actually, when we drive it, we race it. We don't usually put a thermostat in it. When it's street time, winter time, we'll run the, uh, the thermostat in the car. So this thing is backed by uh, M&M, Turbo 400, Mark Mickey and his guys. They always take care of us. Um, I tell you, one of the, I, I'll just tell you one of our secrets to this car. One of our secrets to this car is Chase Driscoll tunes this car. Tune, Chase is a great friend of ours. Uh, Chase tunes a lot of stuff on uh, No Prep Kings. Uh, Caleb Morton, Axe Man's car, has been doing this a long time. He tunes this little thing for us, man. He's, he's one, of our, one of our great friends and uh, takes care of us. And he tunes this car. You know, when you're running a seven-second street car and it weighs 3,800 pounds, the last thing you want is some, something crazy going on or something that you don't know about when you make a pass. Chase tunes this thing. I feel safe in it. We talk about every single step of the way, what's going to happen with it, and so uh, without him, we probably wouldn't be running uh, seven seconds in a 3,800-pound uh, uh, twin-turbo Coyote. That's for sure. What? Uh, so two more questions on the drive line. What converters in it, and what rear end? It's got a Mark Mickey M&M converter in it, custom bolt-together converter, uh, and we'll change those stators out a little bit if we have to. We've got this thing dialed in pretty good now for the street and to leave. Uh, we started off with a real loose converter, and as we got a handle on the car over the years, we keep tightening it up, tightening it up. So uh, we still got a little room to tighten it up a little more. And uh, rear end under, it's actually a stock rear end. Stock rear end, uh, John Homeyer and the guys at Homeyer Fabrication took and just braced that thing up. We're running some uh, big heavy-duty axles in it, but we're actually running a, a stock four rear end in this thing. 
Wow, four to nine inch, baby. Four to nine inch. You got a color that really pops. So when you're on the start line, when you do the burnout, everybody sees you up there. Talk to me about this paint job. Yeah, man, we just love outside the box stuff that nobody else has. So this car was it, man. I just, I looked for months and months to find a car to do this all over. Had one in uh, Canada. I was looking to go uh, purchase. And then I seen this one online and just the look of it, it was a pro touring car. So it had a nice look. The color was a little different. But it was vinyl top, and we love vinyl top. It's a big 67 Fairlane, one of my most favorite cars in the world. And when I seen it, we just had to buy it. I literally called up to the guys, uh, called up to them, made them an offer. They bought it. We hopped in the truck. We went up, picked it up the same day. Um, we run Willwood uh, uh, disc brakes across the front and the rear. Uh, we're running uh, weld racing wheels on it, lightweight wheels. The color is kind of a special color. It's a little bit of synergy green, but we've done some special, special voodoo to get that color where it pops and it's got that kind of yellow tint to it uh, to be a little bit more distinct. Vinyl top, we love the vinyl top. It's one of our favorites. We always try in our cars, we try to keep everything stock appearing as possible. If we're running uh, uh, a true street deal, we need to be a true street car. I mean, we work really hard. It takes a lot of extra money, a lot of extra time to do that. You know, we could throw some uh, uh, plexiglass windshields in it and take the dash out. We just don't do that. I'll show you inside here. Yeah, in fact, I opened the door on it before and the door is actually really heavy and solid. It's not just some lightweight, flimsy hey, fiberglass Chief. thing. I love the uh, carbon fiber wrap on the roll bar. Obviously, it's not a carbon fiber roll bar. It's not a carbon fiber roll bar, but I'm sitting around the shop one day and we're getting ready to either paint it or do whatever, and I'm sitting going, you know what? I think I'm going to wrap this thing. What I figured out, if you're going to wrap a 25.5 cage, it's going to take you about four weeks, about four hours a night to get it done and do it right because I wrapped every bit of that myself in there and uh, uh, a lot of Advil after coming out of that car wrapping <laughs> that thing. So you got the stock kind of wheel well, car sitting nice and low. Yep, what nice and low. What are you running? Run a Mickey Thompson 275 Radial Pro on it. And then here's the back, everybody. So again, with the monochromatic blacked out look, got rid of the chrome. Yeah, had on. chrome, it's hard choice. I'll tell you, the chrome looks good on it, but we had to, we had to black it all out. Uh, in the back, you can see we've got a 12 gallon fuel cell. So we, we gotta have enough fuel to run these uh, true street events. We've got a, a big old 10 gallon uh, water tank here. We can fill that sucker full of ice and load that thing down. We've got, uh, if you notice all of our lines, this is some of Dale's handiwork over at Fatboy Fabrication, how pretty all these lines are instead of just running rubber lines and things through the, through, and under the car, we've run steel lines all the way through with real nice valves to uh, um, empty our stuff. We run two batteries on this car, Evan. And the reason we run two batteries is we've run True Street a long time, adds weight to the car, but what, we've slung an alternator belt before. I mean, it was years ago, it's only happened once, but we run two batteries, so if we ever get up there and something happens, we're in the lanes, we got an extra battery, we pop that thing. If some for some crazy reason our battery's low, we engage the other battery. We never have a problem, knock on wood, but um, just one of our, you know how it is with athletes, everybody's got their little uh, quirks about what they do, so we've been running two batteries for over 20 years. Yeah, that trunk is nicely laid out. Not a whole lot of room for luggage, but that's okay. You got the pumps. You got uh, Alan, so I see this tank up here that's vented outside of the, right behind the uh, rear glass. And that's a hole right there you can see that's vented. So is that for a crankcase pressure relief? Yeah, we kind of moved a burn down tank to the back of the car just for easy access, bigger. We could uh, uh, not have to worry about trying to empty that thing quite as much. And it's just kind of cool, honestly. Yeah, when you started it up, it kind of like pushed a little condensation out. Yeah. And it kind of was puffing out of there and it looks really super cool. Yeah, we did a little trick. We took, uh, um, just to kind of keep that from too much coming out. We took a little uh, uh, real super fine steel wool and put down in there, kind of made a little baffle for it, which kind of worked great for us because, again, if we're on the street, we want to get anything on the street or have any issues or anything like that, so we try to take every precaution when we go to the track that we don't see that. So here's that trunk with the blacked out rear panel there, which looks cool, the Ford panel. That would normally be like a chrome or a polished piece, and then, of course, Allen runs over 150 miles an hour, so by the NHRA rules, a parachute is mandatory. See, it's got the funny car cage, that NMCA, NMRA True Street. A lot of carbon fiber decked out. 
got, got the back cool. seat in it, Evan. Oh, wow. Look at that. It really does. Does anybody ever ride back there? No, nobody ever rides back there. Wow. You know, let's walk around the other side of the car because one of the cleanest things, I've never really got to get up close with this car and, and look at it and all the detail that you're running. There's the piping for the turbos. You can see he's got the reinforced intake manifold because how many pounds of boost are you running? About 45. I'll tell you a story with that. Wow, that's reinforced, Evan. We were at the uh, uh, streetcar takeover in Bowling Green. Uh, and I tell you, we were going to the finals. We were in the semifinals. Man, we hit a hit. We hit a lick. We're ramming down the track, and all of a sudden, there, psh, start going. We took that, took that pass. We come back, pop the hood off, and we split it from right here all the way down. So we're going to the finals. So we're like, okay, we got to figure this out. We're going to win this thing. So we take a tire patch that you patch a tire with. We put it in this crack all the way down. We take that heat tape that you can't hardly cut with a pair of scissors. We line that heat tape. Then we take a turbo boot. We cut it, strap it over it. We take tie straps. We cut the tie straps, run them around each uh, runner to make a loop. Then we took and uh, put ratchet straps over it and strapped it down with ratchet straps. And then took a heavy duty ratchet strap from here all the way over, strapped it down. Nobody knew what was going on. We were like, hey, we're good. We'll be there in just a minute. Put the hood on. The hood was bulging at the top because of the ratchet straps. We get up there. Chase looks at it and Chase says, all right, here's the deal. We're either probably going to blow it up or we're going to win, he said, because I had to put 55 pounds of boost in it to make sure. I think it's going to make about 39 on this pass. Just bay was leaking out. We go up there. We take the win. We win Bowling Green Streetcar, streetcar Takeover. Thing made 39 pounds, just exactly what Chase said. That boy is good. He predicted how much boost is going to make and the ET with the busted intake. Man, that is absolutely incredible. Look at those turbos. I love the way you got the inlets right through the grill and those red billet or anodized. Yeah, John's, John's done a great job of hellion with this new turbo. I tell you, there's only a handful of these out in this size right now. And, um, we're just trying to get some data for him. And like I said, we made five pounds more boost in the first second off the trailer with these same tune, same everything. And so it took us, honestly, probably about uh, uh, two, three months to really kind of get this thing dialed back in because we upgraded the fuel uh, fuel system to a uh, one of the multi-stage pumps. So as you, you know, more RPM, it just keeps going more. So we're not drawing so much current on the battery, just idling around. And between the two of those, with all the fuel we got and as much power as these turbos are making, it took us a couple months to get this thing back dialed in uh, uh, to where it needed to be. That's amazing. What suspension's under it? Uh, we're at Mincer shocks on this thing. Adjustable, uh, adjustable in the rear, air shock. Um, they do a great job for us. We fill those things up. I mean, we rarely have any problem out of them, and uh, um, we love them. They make this car, this big old heavy car, they make it go down the track straight and easy. It's the same thing, it's just this ladder bar uh, under the car, and then everything else we fabbed up in the, uh, oh, at the man. shop. That is freaking awesome. Another look at that wicked Coyote, seven second power in a 3,800 pound car. What a great machine. I'll be running True Street this weekend. He's run 860 class, he's run all kinds of stuff with it. Wow. Alan, what is it like to sit in the seat and make a seven second pass in this car? I tell you, it just, it, if you want a little excitement, and you want to get that adrenaline all jacked up, you can do it right here in this thing. It, it is absolutely flying. We shipped this thing about 8,500, 8,800 RPM, and it makes, when that power comes on, it'll usually, when we don't have a, a true street tune in it, we have a, our race tune in it, it'll pull the wheels up about 60 feet, it'll carry them about another 80 to 100 feet out, and it just lays it down so nice and easy, and it rolls at the back end. We're running 183 mile an hour or so. We, we think we're going to run a 749. It's kind of our goal with this this year, and we're probably going to be about 186, 187, so uh, we'll be on the shoot early. Alan, what an incredible story. What an incredible car. I hope you guys really dig this. Thanks for stopping by the Rev and Evan channel. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and you can ring the bell so you're notified every time we put up a Rev and Evan video. Alan, good luck out there today. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Me and Dale, we're going to go out here and see what we can get done today. Make it happen. All right, man. Thanks a bunch. We appreciate it. You got it.